Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. That's right, I'm one of the crazy guys who bought one of these things, the Modern Flying V. Now this guitar looks like it has black hardware, but I don't think it does. This is more like a polished aluminum. It appears black in most cases, but you can see it's just a mirror. You can see my camera right there if we get in the right angle. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to Troglies Guitars. So it's kind of like a polished mirror substance, but it appears black at most angles. Now your tailpiece and bridge are made of the same material. Now the strap buttons are not, they are just pure black. However, the mini Grovers are that reflective material. So that's kind of cool. Now Gibson's website does say this has a carved maple top. If you consider this a carved maple top, it's a very weakly carved one. It has a little bit to it, but not a lot. I would almost consider this a flat top, but it has a little bit of a carve to it. Because this is made with a maple top, mahogany body, and a mahogany neck. Now these guitars were initially really cool to me. But being a limited edition 2018 model, I figured there would be around 500 of these made, but there were actually only 99 of these made. There were 33 of each color, and there were three colors. So I really do see these things appreciating in value in the years to come. They are very hated now, but I think if Gibson does get sold to someone else, I think these will become future collector's items just because of how bizarre these things are. And overall, they're fantastic playing guitars. However, do I think it deserves the $4,500 price point? After having one in my hands, I think the most somebody should pay for one of these is probably around $3,000. And that's probably what a used example would go for. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is my second time filming this review because I felt the first time I let my emotions get the best of me and I was a little bit too critical of this guitar. I was really excited to purchase this guitar. Yes, I had to pay full retail price and yes, I had every intentions of keeping this thing because I think it's really unique and interesting and will eventually become a collector's item. However, when I opened this case, I was very disappointed with this guitar. This finish is called Ebony Prism and I honestly don't agree with the whole ebony part. I say this guitar is purple. And if I would have known this guitar was purple, I would not have chose this finish. From Gibson's photos of the three finishes they offered, Ebony Prism, Silver Prism, and Gold Prism, I thought Ebony Prism looked the best. I thought this was going to be like the Moonless Night Les Paul custom. Because this thing, let's face it, this is the Star Trek emblem and it just looks like a rocket ship in general, so I thought a nice stark black finish with some silver sparkles in it would look awesome because it's very spacey. And then from there I thought silver would be the second choice if I couldn't find one of these ebony prisms, and I didn't really like the gold one that much. However, now that I've seen ebony prism, I understand why they call it that, because at certain angles it is black, when you shine a light through a prism, it kind of takes all the colors out in different wavelengths, so you kind of see a rainbow. So that's where the prism comes from in this name, is it does have a sparkle rainbow effect to it. There was actually a Les Paul Studio release not too long ago that had a very similar finish called Graphite Pearl. I just wish Gibson would have been a little bit more transparent that this guitar is more so purple. So this color really does not float my boat personally. It just didn't meet my expectations of what I thought Ebony Prism would be. So my first video, I hated this guitar, uh, but I felt I needed to do this thing justice because it really is an interesting guitar. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Shame on you, Gibson. You totally stole this guitar from the Jackson Roswell design. It is pretty much the exact same guitar. Gibson just made their version a little less pointy and they added a neck pickup and it's actually made of wood. 
Now, when I did my initial 2018 limited edition guitar overview, I did not know about the Jackson Roswell, so thankfully I did learn about it. That kind of took the coolness factor of this guitar down a little bit, but those original Jacksons are like $9,000 guitars. Now these are four and a half thousand dollars and that's pretty much what you have to pay at the retail stores. They really don't budge that much. And the whole entire internet hates this guitar. There's a few people out there like me that secretly do like these guitars. And in my mindset, I deal with vintage guitars every day. I have no problem paying four and a half thousand dollars for a really nice limited edition custom guitar. However, this one, it just doesn't quite feel like a custom shop guitar. There are a few features about it that feel high end, but I'll go over a few things here that I think they should have changed. First, you have a Nashville style bridge. Okay, there's nothing wrong with a Nashville bridge, but when it comes to a Gibson and you're paying crazy money, most people expect the ABR1. Now there's nothing extremely special about an ABR1 bridge compared to a Nashville. It just comes down to historical accuracy. These guitars have the 496R and 500T pickups. Personally, I thought this guitar was way too hot sounding for clean tones, but it could just be I need to adjust the pickups down a little bit. But I hated this guitar as a clean guitar. However, once I threw the distortion on this thing, that's when it changed from how could I be so mad with this guitar when it sounds so good? This is definitely a metal monster. It's a heavy rock machine. You, you just don't play jazzy licks on this thing. My next complaint is they used Rich Light. Now, there's nothing wrong with Rich Light. It's just not ebony. But this particular example looks extremely poor in my opinion. It has a weird gray color. This looks like ebony that has been dried out for 20 years without ever being oiled. Now you're not supposed to oil these rich light boards, but you can clean them with water. But I didn't want to touch this guitar because unfortunately I'm not going to keep it. Now once again, I had full intentions of keeping this guitar. I might actually still try to seek out one of these silver ones because now I think that is my finish of choice. My next small complaint is they used mini Grover tuners on here. I think they should have went with locking Grover tuners. Really make this a high-end feeling guitar. Now tuning stability was actually pretty darn good on this thing just right out of the box. And now for the absolute worst design nightmare of all. The input jack is right here. Now at first glance I thought, great, I am so happy they didn't put it on the front because that would have just killed this whole guitar for me. However, I play sitting down a lot and this guitar is impossible to sit down with. On a normal flying V you can kind of rest it in between your leg like this and that's pretty comfortable, it gets your guitar at a nice angle and you can really just shred on it if you'd like to. However, this thing, if you're using a traditional lead, it sticks out and you're either going to break your input jack or you're going to short your lead out by putting your leg there. So there is no possible way to sit with this guitar. I really wish they would have did one of those rubber strips like the Karina V's have to make it possible to do that. They could have designed it to look like a spaceship part or something. I think that would have been interesting. Now if you have a 90 degree angle jack, that might work okay, and you might still be able to get away with doing that, but in my experience I had to put a strap on this thing to even play it. Now when I had this on a strap, it was comfortable, however I feel this guitar is in the category of too light. It weighs a little over 6 pounds, and I don't know, this is just me personally, some people might dig that whole 6 pound thing but it just kind of feels like a toy. But then again, I'm also used to, you know, 11 pound Norlin era Les Paul Customs. But I've always found that eight pounds is the limit. Anything under eight never feels quite right to me. So that is one personal beef with this guitar. Now this has a master volume and a master tone with a three-way switch in the middle here. And something else to go over here is this has the Apex headstock carve. Now, what this basically is, is a modern day volute. 
These things look absolutely awful in my opinion, but that's probably what people felt like in 69 and the early 70s when Gibson started doing Volu. They said, it's different, I hate it. Now this really does act just like a Volu. And if you don't know what a volute is, is it's basically a extra chunk of wood here to give the headstock more support should it fall. Because these Gibsons are prone to headstock breaks. So this kind of fights against that. I believe the first model Gibson used this Apex carve on was one called like the Rhinoceros or Rhino, something like that. It was like a silver Les Paul custom maybe. And I thought this was sweet because it's like awesome. Rhino horn on a rhino guitar. A plus Gibson, A plus. But then when I started seeing these appear on other custom shop guitars, I was like, whoa, I guess that is the new modern day Volute. It looks a little weird. It looks like you need to stab somebody with it. But hey, I'm open to change. I'm okay with that. I thought it was interesting and I'm glad I got to experience a guitar that had it. Now playing this guitar, no, you don't feel that. It's all behind your hand. If anything, I find volutes help you stay within a certain area. But I don't think a lot of people have a problem with just sliding off of their fretboard or anything. But I don't know, the guitars I play usually have a volute. So overall, does this guitar deserve all the hate it gets? Kind of. The only reason why I do say that it deserves some hate is because this is a completely ripped off design. There's no way Gibson didn't know about the Jackson Roswell designs looking pretty much the exact same. All Gibson really did was slightly change the body shape, add a neck pickup, and do enough to this guitar that they could probably get away with it in the law's eyes. But if you put that aside and we just discredit this finish not being exactly what I thought it was, this was an excellent playing guitar. I didn't notice any real finish issues with this guitar. I didn't notice any bad fret work. The only small thing that I saw that probably came from the factory is there is a scratch on our pick guard right here. I don't know if they slipped while installing that or something but it is a long scratch line there. But besides that, this guitar was great. It really was, I just absolutely hate this finish. It should have been called Purple Prism. If it was called Purple Prism, I would have no faults with this guitar. I just feel I was personally misled a little bit by the description as Ebony Prism. So now that I've rambled on about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds.
let's go ahead and look at the condition of this guitar real quick. This is mainly just to document some footage because nobody had documented any of these guitars. All the dealers that got them, they sold so fast they didn't get time to make a video. So this is when you know curiosity gets the best of me. I had to buy one of these. Not only to document this guitar, I did want to keep it. But once again, this is a rich light fretboard. I think it just looks a little bit dry. I'm sure I could clean this up somehow, but I didn't want to modify this instrument in any way. Again, you have some light polishing swirls just for me touching this guitar, but that'll kind of happen on any guitar, really. But the bass side fin is definitely a lot larger than the treble side one, and they come to a nice rounded edge. Now that might not be as metal being rounded, but I don't know, something about pointy guitars, those things always get broken off or dinged up really bad. So I think the rounded design is more well thought out. However, it's probably not quite as cool. And you do have your Gibson Custom sticker right there. Back of the headstock, your serial number's up here. I'm not showing it because, well, it's not my guitar. Back of the headstock here, once again, you have your Apex carve here. It's kind of like the modern day Volute. And Gibson describes these necks as 60s. I don't quite agree with that. I think these are more so like a medium, almost 59 territory neck. They've got a little bit of beef to them, but not a lot. Once again, the only reason why I hated this guitar so much when I first filmed this is because I was really disappointed. This is not what I thought the finish looked like. I don't want a purple flying V when I was expecting a black with silver sparkle. But you know, some of that's on me. I should have thought about it prism but it's so hard to tell until you have it in your hands. The side profile view of this guitar does show it has binding, so that does hide the maple top there. And again, terrible location for this input jack. I think it would have been interesting if they actually would have wired it somehow to be right here, right by your strap button. Now that would have required a really ridiculously long route, but I think it would have been possible. And then you could still sit like this because your input jack would be sticking out right there. So overall, would I recommend purchasing one of these guitars because you want a really nice playing guitar? Yes, I would. However, again, I think four and a half thousand is just a little bit much to most people for a brand new model. But seeing as this was a limited edition of only 33 of each color, I don't think this guitar deserved so much hate over that price. Yes, you can buy PRS this, you can buy Fender Mexicos for this. When it comes down to it, people, a Fender or PRS, it's not a Gibson. You like what you like, and you kind of have to pay what you gotta pay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look of this very controversial guitar. I don't regret trying to give this guitar a chance, and I think I will try to seek out one of those silver prism ones. All right, so the Modern Flying V comes with a rectangle case. It says Gibson Custom on it. It's just your standard kind of Explorer-like case, but slightly smaller. You have two latches on the front and a combo lock. And the inside is that beautiful dark maroon interior. Now this case was not designed very well. I would say this case will actually break your guitar if you're not careful. But let's go over that real quick. You only have one small neck support there. And you don't have an additional one there. Here's why this is bad. Once the guitar is actually placed in the case correctly. I mean it's a nice snug fit. They got that part right. But the headstock actually touches down on the case, which is not good. They need some sort of additional padding right there in my opinion. 
but that's the only complaint I have with this case. So I hope you troglodytes enjoyed this review of a very controversial guitar. If you're new to the channel, I do reviews and demos and a series called Would You Rock or Not that are posted every single day. I am a daily upload channel. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.